probably mill or drill out holes in each one of these runners to be able to weld in um, the fuel injector bungs. I'm Michael Essa, and I'm gonna take this 2016 340i and turn it into a drift bar. All right, what's up guys? So back here at the car, we've got, again, some more stuff done, little detail stuff. We got the wheel arches, we've got those all welded up, except for the inside, I gotta put a couple more uh, tack welds with a MIG in there. Everything here is done. We've got the mount for the coolant reservoir. So this will be mounted right here. The window is gonna stop here, so all of this is gonna be open. And finished up the fuel filler panel be mounted right here so that'll get bolted down I'll weld the tab on here also and then uh, we've got a hose going down to the tank so we've got the quick fill that's makes it super quick and easy to fill the tank the water lines on this side are done so I modified this dash 20 that comes out of the CSF R1 radiator so I got a dash 2090 cut the end off of it welded a tube on so I can get it to go to the water pump and we've got some HPS hoses that are reducers. So it's a inch and a quarter, which is the dash 20 size to an inch and three quarter, which is the size on the front of this water pump. Made some aluminum hard lines for that basically go into the car in the bottom like this. And uh, then we'll have another tube that gets welded on or maybe even just a hose coupler here. So the dash 20 size is gonna be like half hard line. And that was just the best way to do it instead of running a soft line all the way back here to the pump. It's pretty tight right there. There wasn't enough room for a fitting to, to get into that spot. So we bent up some aluminum tubing. Inside the car, it's pretty much the same as it was before. We haven't really done anything else there. Everything else is pretty much done. Firewall stuff is all mocked up and, and finished. Everything else is already welded in. I've got to, once we take everything out, we'll weld up the steering column, weld the ECU and uh, PDM mount and then I will also weld on the bracket for the brake fluid reservoir that's gonna go right here. The fab work under the hood is basically done except for the intercooler piping. I've already got it all figured out, but I need to make a bracket to hold the intercooler in place. The tanks are done and it's just gonna drop right in here. So we'll have real short intercooler piping. That'll keep the uh, the less area you have to fill, the faster the turbo will spool up and boost will get into the engines. A short 90 degree tube right here in the intercooler and a little bit of an S bend into the intake manifold and we'll be done there. The wastegate pipes and the downpipe, I guess in this case the up pipe, because we got it going out of the hood. Those are all mocked up and ready to get welded. And then the intake manifold is almost done. Um, basically it's all mocked up. So we got this dock race intake manifold from an N54. So it's like from a 335 and we modified it. So basically cut the runners off, uh, a few inches of the runners off, had a flange plasma cut and got that fit on here to the B58 engine, rotated this to get it clear and so go into the intercooler. It was pointing over here before and is gonna make contact with this. And then the last thing I gotta do is notch a little section of this out to clear the oil filter housings. Probably mill or drill out holes in each one of these runners to be able to weld in uh, the fuel injector bungs.
and if I need to make a fixture to hold this thing into the mill, but that's basically gonna be the best way to line everything up and make sure we get even spacing and make sure the bungs aren't crooked or pointing weird directions so that way once it's all together, we're not gonna have any fuel uh, or boost leak problems at the bottom of the injectors. What we're gonna do today is basically take the entire car apart back down to the bare chassis. I've got a few things that I need to finish welding. Once that's all done, we're gonna push the car across the street to the paint shop, and we're gonna have the engine get that in the back of the truck and take it over to Papadakis Racing, and they're gonna do some head work to it for us. Um, basically, these direct fuel injector ports that are in the head, they go directly into the cylinder, and when you go to port injection, these things, you could leave them bolted down, but they're gonna melt. The tips of these things get so hot because there's no fuel flowing through them. So we need to pull these out and have dowels, aluminum dowels basically pressed into the head to fill those plugs. We've been talking to him about a few other things also, maybe a different profile camshaft and a little bit of head porting. They know what they're doing. They have experience with this engine and they're gonna take care of us. So we don't need to worry about trying to figure out how to do everything. They've got everything figured out already. So it's gonna save us a lot of time. So we're going to call this the SLB58. So now we want to do head studs, yep. plug, DI, uh, ports. You want to do the exhaust cam thing? Yeah, you said it wasn't it wasn't yeah. a big uh, expense picks up like 15, 20 ish horsepower. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. So then the cam and then uh, shims. You got it. And here's all of the uh, super tech stuff. Okay. So, so he's gonna do about uh, springs. Uh, he'll just do like a bowl blend sort of thing. He hates doing the porting and stuff nowadays because yeah. he's gotta get older and stuff. Yeah. It's gonna be a stock bottom end. And if we decide to build it up and try to go for big power, this piece is gonna be a demo car unless it's amazing and we feel like we should use it as an FP car. We don't have to send anything out because we can pull the head off, we can plug the DI ports, we can put the Calford exhaust cam in and then they have a spring kit that works with the stock valves. So we just swap that stuff over and not do a valve adjustment or anything like that. Okay. My cam alignment stuff should work with this. Okay. Because I didn't see any like differentiate, it didn't differentiate between the different B58s. It was just, yeah. let me show you what I have. You have something that doesn't work. So these are the 625s. So these are the, this is the normal one. 
The only difference is these are these are ARP 2000 version. Okay. Yeah. And they're like tapered. Yeah. Okay. So that's. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. We don't need. Because I have extras of these. So. Yeah. That's those. I've got the cam here. Yep. So here's the exhaust cam. It's just a regrind. Okay. Calford did. Yep. Uh, cal file for this stock oil pressure sending unit. Okay, so cool. you can that's, use that. That's what G was saying. He's like, if we use all the stock sensors, because that's what you guys are running, and he's. Yeah, You'll need some sort of feedback that. for this, uh, the oil pressure. Uh -huh. If you don't hook any power to this, it goes to maximum oil pressure, like 150 psi or 120 oh, or something like that. Got it. And you add duty cycle, and it brings it down. So you can do like a let a map thing or some kind of. Yeah. You'd have to, you tune it. Got so it. G knows how to wire that. This is for your brake master booster. Oh yeah, because the oil pump has like a scavenge uh, vacuum pump in it, right? So you want to plug this. Okay. Or else you'll be sucking a bunch of air into your crank and then it, yeah, so plug that. Got it. Uh, so you pull it out and do build and, something yep, or you can just put a plug. plug. Yeah. Yep. Crank straight forward, knock straight forward. Water pump, you can figure out, right? Yeah, I've got basically, I put a dash 20 on the back of the water pump here. Yep. Uh, dash 16 here, so it'll go to the R1. So this is the outlet? Yes. And then inlet. Is, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So we have a 20 here, yep. a 16 here. And you plug uh, this one, or the, oh, it doesn't have the It doesn't have that crossover one in the front on this. Okay. So, yeah, it actually had a tube that came off the back and went forward here, mm. like for the radiator hose. Mm -hmm. But I know you guys have that one that like does a crossover from the front to, Oh, I need to do the lockout here too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, it's cap. Yeah. Okay. So it's got the same style heat exchanger, oil filter housing, but it's just obviously in a different bolt pattern. And then same with the, the water outlets. But you made some stuff there that yeah. you, or are you gonna use the plastic one? I'm gonna use the stock plastic one here. And it's got a water outlet here that was going to a small water pump that's for the turbo, mm. right? So ditch all that stuff, plug that, and then that's done. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll know that that's for that. Yeah, it's the only one that's <laughs> gonna fit on. <laughs> Okay, so we got two things right here. We've yep. The, yeah, the, that's I got that. So we've got the engine, stick. engine and battery cable. Right here. But to me, that would be better right here. Okay. You, yeah, you've already kind of measured out the yep. legs to go there. And I think we said decided because it's such a smaller area right here that you'd have more room to do something. Yep. There. So it'll hit either one. Okay. So maybe we'll do it in this one because I I've got the hood hinge here. That's where it was. And then we're gonna that's do a catch right. tank over yep. here where we have a lot of room. I was thinking so it was do. backwards. So, yep. So we'll do this one. That's the bulkhead for that side.
so right there. And that's for all the transmission stuff. So basically when you pull the transmission out, it's just this one plug, all the wires come with it. And this side of the harness stays in the car. It's just that little section that comes out. So these are all new. We gotta Loctite these, one to keep them in place and also because the back of the crankshaft is open to the oil pan. So oil will get past the threads if we don't Loctite it. Yeah. And Loctite doesn't stick well when it's oily. So we'll clean them off. On this B58 engine, this is actually the crankshaft trigger wheel for the uh, crank sensor. So if this isn't installed, you will not get your engine to start. So pretty important piece here. And it's got a dowel that locates it so it can only go on one way. So before you put Loctite on them, you want to install all the bolts, pull the flywheel down, flush with the crank, and then take the bolts out one at a time and put Loctite on them. Because if you don't, there's a chance of getting Loctite behind the flywheel in between the crank and getting some space in there. And when the Loctite dries, the flywheel is going to be a little bit off and you're gonna have a lot of vibration. So this just ensures that doesn't happen. Got a four millimeters of spacing. And basically if you have this always touching the clutch, as the clutch wears, the fingers on that clutch pressure plate start to come up. When that happens, you're gonna get pressure against the release bearing, which is gonna be trying to disengage the clutch the whole time. So the clutch isn't gonna last long. It's gonna wear out, never really grab. And then on the other hand, if you have too much space, this bearing has a very short amount of usable throw. If it comes out too far, it'll actually pop the cylinder out and all the fluid will come out and this will basically 
this piece in here will pop out and you can see there's only about maybe eight to 10 millimeters of travel before this is flush. And if it gets past that, there's an O-ring that'll pop, all the fluid will come out and your clutch won't work anymore. So getting that spacing right is important. Probably leave the drive shaft out for now, make it easier to get to the wires and run them up there. Get the drive shaft be in our way, so mm -hmm. leave that out. We're pretty much done down here. If it's a vacuum for the brake booster, basically it, it pumps and it creates a certain amount of vacuum and then it can't go higher than that, right? Otherwise right. you'd have an insane amount of vacuum assist. Yep. So there's some vacuum. sort of regulator somewhere, but yeah. is it outside of the sit outside of the block? Is it somewhere else in the system? And now that thing is just pumping like crazy and pulling vacuum from somewhere else, but how is it getting oil into the cylinders or without creating any crankcase vacuum? 